Hi everyone. I have had a ton of interest in the calorimeter constant, how to calculate the calorimeter constant. So I thought it might be useful to go ahead and show you how to collect the data for a calorimeter constant. Um, I wanted to show just the collection of data here, and then there's going to be a second video where I will process and show you how to do this calculation. So it will be like a, a second example for you. So remember the calorimeter constant, um, it is determining how much energy this system, so it's just two styrofoam cups, um, that's my calorimeter, my insulators, um, how much energy this system absorbs for every one degree the temperature increases. Because you'll recall when I add something, um, let's say I, this is cold, I put something warm into it, that energy goes two places. The energy is going to go into the cold water and into the calorimeter constant. So to get more accurate data, um, I want to know exactly how much energy does this system, this calorimeter constant, um, absorb for every one degree that we increase the temperature. Now, I will tell you the limitation of this lab. It's time boiling the water. Um, first thing I would do when you go into the lab is get water boiling. And the water you use, it does not have to be distilled water. You can use tap water, that's totally fine. But your limiting factor is going to be how long it takes to boil that water. Um, I'd also strongly recommend always do two trials. So you're going to go into the lab and you'll be, um, be determining like the heated solution. You'll be putting a salt into water or you're going to be determining the specific heat of a metal. You'll put a hot metal into the cold water. Um, but in order to uh, have accurate data, you need to first find the calorimeter constant. Now, another honest truth, it doesn't matter when you're in the lab, when you find the calorimeter constant. It's going to take a while for this to boil. And so say you're de doing heat of solution, you're going to put some salt into the water. Start doing those experiments while you're waiting for this water to boil. And then at the end of the lab, that's when you can do your two trials of the calorimeter constant. Um, so keep that in mind. Just I know how it is. You go into the lab and the goal is always just to get out of there as fast as you can. <laughs> Let's amend that. We're going to make the goal learning. You want to learn and experience. <laughs> but believe me, I know how it is. I spent years working at the University of Utah in their general chemistry lab. So I know the goal is speed. Um, so there's a couple tricks. Get that water boiling, do your labs, and then when that water's finally boiling, jump in and you can go ahead and do your calorimeter constants. Okay, um, so first thing that we're going to do is get the cold water, and I'm just going to use regular tap water. Uh, you know, it might be slight OCD habits. Um, I like to use 50 mils. I try and do 50 mils really, really close of each the, of the hot and the cold water. Um, and then a good practice is I like to take a white piece of paper and put it behind so I'm reading. Um, and it, sometimes it can make it a little bit easier, or if I go like this, it can be a little bit easier. Sometimes I'll use colored paper if I'm having a hard time reading it, and that helps it, it stand out. So I know you can put something behind your graduated cylinder to read it. So I'll use my, my pink cloth here, and we are at, so remember, I'm reading the meniscus. You always read the lowest part of that graduated cylinder. Um, and mine looks like that. That lowest part right there is the meniscus. You always read the lowest part. We have some um, cohesion happening on, the, or excuse me, adhesion happening on the sides where the water's attracted to the glass on the sides. Um, so I'm looking and we are, this is, um, the tick marks are at the ones place. So remember, you always, for sick figs, read exactly what you know plus a guess. Well, my line, it looks like it's hitting right spot on the 49, 49 mils. So I'm going to say my, here I am cold, 49.0, because I think it's hitting perfect on that line. So my guess at the tens place is the zero. Now remember, this is a trick we use in chemistry all the time. Um, if I have 49, mils of water, the density of water is one mil for one gram, which means I have 49 grams. Love that. We've got 49 grams of the cold water. So I'm going to pour this water, and it's tap water, it's not truly cold. I'm going to pour this water into my, um, into my uh, calorimeter, and then I'm going to stir it. Oh, and do you like my temperature code? Make sure I can read it here. Make sure that it's stable. 
that it's not moving. Okay, it's holding. So the temperature of the water and the cup. So the cup and the water are in thermal equilibrium and it's stable. It's 23.2 degrees C. Let's write that down. So the initial temperature of my cold water, 23.2 degrees C. Now we are going to do the hot water. So I got this boiling. I have my silicon gloves so that I don't burn myself. And I'm going to pour, I'm going to pour about 50 mils, close to 50 mils in my graduated cylinder. This is my hot water. Now doing two trials, I have about another 60 mils. So put enough water in there to get boiling so you can do your two trials. Okay, so I'm going to read this. I'm going to go ahead and put the pink behind it just to be sure that I can see those lines. Clearly, clearly. And I am just a hair under 50. So I know for sure that I've got 49. And my guess is going to be 0.8. It's not quite hitting that 50. So um, I'm going to say the 49.8 mils is going to be 49.8 grams, okay? Now, here is the speed part of this. Um, I'm going to take the temperature and then quickly pour it in here. One more time, I want to make sure that this is still stable at the 23.2, that we're in thermal equilibrium between the cup and the, the water. And it's going to be in thermal equilibrium um, with the with the classroom as well just our our air temperature yeah we're still 23.2 awesome okay so i take this temperature in here and i get ready to pour fast so sitting 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 it's climbing still climbing i wait until that is stable and notice I'm going to pour with the glove because this is hot. If I use my bare hand, that hot water would go rushing past the glass where my hand's holding. I don't want you to get burned. So use the glove, use the glove to pour. Okay, we are stable and it is holding at exactly 73.0. Okay, so I quickly take this out, pour that in. Oh, and you can see a little bit of steam go out. I begin stirring. And I want to cover this. Welcome to high school chemistry. I'm trying to trap, okay, on another honest truth. Some of that heat escapes into the air. And I'm trying to trap as much as I can. And even when I poured it in, you can see a little bit of evaporation. It's okay. You can talk about it in your evaluation. What are limitations of the air of the lab? What are errors of the lab? What would you do to get better, stronger data? I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off. Okay, and as I'm looking at this, I'm waiting for it to come into thermal equilibrium. Remember the hot water went into the cold water, hot water is going to cool down. Cool down. The cold water is going to absorb the energy and it's going to warm up. And we are stable now. It is holding at 45.5 degrees. 45.5 degrees. 45.5 degrees. And I didn't write down the initial, that was 73 degrees. And then over here, thermal equilibrium, they're the same temperatures, 45.5 degrees C. Okay, great. Um, so at this point, I can pour this water out. I would, to do my second trial, I can feel it's just warm. Okay, it feels a little warm because it got up to 45 degrees. I would take my tap water and I would swish it around because I'm trying to absorb that energy out of that warm cup, pour that out, and then I would start over. So you can see, you can collect the data. I mean, within five minutes or less, you can have your data for two trials. It goes quick, except for boiling that water. That's what's going to take the longest, but once you get that water boiled, man, you'll get your calorimeter constant data really, really quick. So the next video, I will take this data and we will actually calculate the calorimeter constant, the C-cal right there. We are looking for C-cal. So we'll find that, and then you can use that calorimeter constant when you do all of your other experiments, if you're finding um, the specific heat of a metal or if you're doing a heat of solution. Okay, good job, you guys. So proud of you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.